G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for another edition of Just The Tips, this time with round 16. Um, finally, we're getting another full round of fixtures again. Buy rounds are a little bit annoying. Um, you know, to be honest, at the moment, it's nice to have a bit of relief from watching the Eagles lose by, you know, 120 to 170 points every week. But in general, I always like to see the back of the buy rounds. And we're getting back to full weekends of football once again. And it's very exciting. Obviously, the finals race is heating up. I have done a video uh, earlier this week uh, or yesterday uh, about how uh, even I think this finals race is and how there's probably still 10 teams competing for the final four spots, which makes each and every week from this point of the season very, very interesting. Some really good matchups this particular weekend. A, a finals uh, rematch between Brisbane and Richmond to kick it off. And um, we've also got the grand final replay and an absolute thriller between West Coast and St Kilda coming up this weekend. Uh, but in all seriousness, some juicy matchups as always. Since I've been away, my tipping has gone to absolute shit, as has my fantasy team, but we'll run through the weekly winners of how everyone's going regardless. So I'm 524th. Um, there was one week where I got two. I got three last week, um, which was particularly poor. And uh, now, yeah, 524th. So the round 15 winner, we actually had three to people tie for the best score this week between Rattuzzi, Hitchy97, and Whirly Skirly. So well done. Those three people got a perfect round of six correct tips and the correct margin as well, which is outstanding. The tipping leader is someone called Christian2125642, uh, which is a mouthful. Um, that must be annoying filling out forms. With a total score of 93 and a total margin of 398, which is really, really good going. So 16 entire tips, one per week. In fact, more than that. Uh, better than myself. So well done, Christian. The fantasy leader is still Bailey's Brawlers. I'm not sure if that's fluctuated since I've been away. I wasn't able to check, but it's the same person as when I last did this update. Bailey Brawlers has 2,171 as an average score in fantasy, which was great. And the game day squad winner this week was Edward343 with a score of 2388, which is really impressive considering it was the bye week as well. If you're not sure what Game Day Squad is, it is a great fantasy alternative uh, that we are currently doing a weekly show on each and every week. That should have already come out this week, my update on how the team's going. Um, and as I said, I'll shout out the winner each week on this particular video. As always, guys, before we crack into the round 16 tips, I will shout out the sponsor of the True Footy YouTube channel, which is, of course, manscaped.com for all your male grooming needs. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0, their top of the range uh, body hair trimmer, it gets the job done quickly and easily. I use it all the time. It's ceramic bladed, it's waterproof, the battery life runs 90 minutes um, if you're someone who needs 90 minutes to shave their body. But it's a great tool, I took it with me on Kentucky and uh, yeah, it was able to manscape on the run as well. But it's not just that, they've got the nose and ear hair trimmer, the weed whacker, which they're plugging at the moment, uh, which is a great little tool for someone who has issues with, you know, nose hair and ear hair, it's actually a really common thing. So by all means, get yourself 20% off and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 on their website. So let's crack into this week's games and we start off with a beauty between Brisbane and Richmond. And I say it's a beauty even though it's third versus 12th as you can see, but these two teams always have good clashes I feel because I've been in three finals since uh, 2019 I want to say. I think Richmond won the first one uh, at the Gabba and Brisbane subsequently won the two finals after that. And even it, recently as last year, that game went down to the absolute wire with the Lions prevailing. So I just have a feeling here that Richmond will lift to the occasion. These these games are always good in the same way that, um, you know, ironically Sydney and West Coast always used to be good games. God, that hurts to think about. But anyway, Brisbane versus Richmond, I'm expecting a good game here, even though Brisbane should be the much highly fancy team. Richmond are seeing a little bit of a resurgence. They are coming off the bye though, and Brisbane took care of St Kilda by five goals at Marvel last week. So I think what we'll see here is a spirited Richmond performance. They'll threaten to do Richmond things throughout this game, but Brisbane will prevail. Maybe the bye is a factor as well, but I think Brisbane will run away late to win this game by 28 points, but it will be a good game throughout. Then we've got the grand final rematch, and this is a case of Sydney wanting to exact some revenge over the Cats. It's the first time they've played in Sydney since that game. But it's not just the grand final they need revenge for because they went down by 93 points at GMHBA uh, earlier this year as well. So Geelong inflicting two massive victories over the Swans. Both of these sides need to take this game seriously. We, um, I'm sure they would anyway, but with respect to the finals race, both Geelong and Sydney sitting outside the eight this year. Who would have predicted that at the start of the year? Um, at 9th and 13th, and the Swans in particular really have no margin for error. They've got a massive percentage boost. Obviously, the percentages between these two sides are quite similar because of their 100 171 point win last week. 
In terms of form lines though, I'm not reading too much into that. They did beat the Demons at GMHBA, which is a good victory as well. Uh, I, I think I'm still gonna tip to long here, to be honest. The Swans definitely would've got some confidence back after their big win against West Coast, but again, that was an absolute training drill. In fact, it, if that was a training drill, it would've been considered a piss weak one. So I just think with the outs that Sydney still have in terms of their back line, I don't know if they're gonna be able to contend with Geelong in this game. So I'll say Geelong do win this game and they'll win this by 20 points. Then we've got the Bulldogs versus Fremantle, a rematch of last year's elimination final. So that's uh, all three games so far, rematches of last year's final series. Um, the Bulldogs, they've had some patchy form. They've dropped three of their last four, um, admittedly against some good opponents like Port Adelaide and Geelong. Um, and Fremantle have been a mixed bag themselves. Um, obviously two really good wins against the Ds and the Cats not too long ago, then bad losses against the Giants and Richmond and then they came back into form a little bit against Essendon. This one is a tough one because I think it was as recently as last year the Dockers did beat the Dogs here at Marvel. In my head, I actually thought that the Dogs had a knack of smashing Fremantle at Marvel, but that, I think that only happened once. It just stayed in my memory for a long time. So I had it, having a look at it, this one is a tough one because which Fremantle will come out firing? It's gonna be Sean Darcy versus Tim English. Tim English, as good as he is, is probably not gonna be able to beat Darcy in the actual taps and Fremantle's both, well, both of these sides are very strong clearance sides. This is the second time these two sides have met this year. Uh, earlier in the year when Fremantle was playing poorly, the Dogs won this game by 50 points. I'm gonna tip the home side here. I know the Dogs are a little bit out of form and I know that I've probably been a little bit negative on Fremantle, but they could win this game. They absolutely could. I rate their chances to win this fairly high, but I think I'm gonna edge on the dog side of things purely because they're at home if this was in Perth. Um, ignoring the fact that the Dogs beat them by 50 early this year. If this was in Perth right now, I'd tip Fremantle, but I'm gonna tip the Dogs here by 22 points. Then we've got Adelaide versus North Melbourne. Uh, Adelaide recently coming off, um, you know, a run of good form really, but uh, had an impressive game against Collingwood at the MCG where they, you know, could have won the game, maybe should have won the game, but uh, they got Collingwood as so many teams have done over the last few years. North Melbourne at the moment, uh, the second last side in the competition, and I think we have seen some improved form from North, you know, contrasting it with my own team right now. Um, that competitiveness has, has returned at North Melbourne, you know, 21 point loss to the Dogs, uh, you know, a 35 point loss to Collingwood and it probably could have been closer. We're seeing a little bit of improvement from North. Um, that being said, Adelaide at Adelaide Oval right now, it's an absolute fortress. You know, they've got a firing forward line. Their midfield is playing well, giving their forwards opportunities. And I just don't really give North Melbourne a, a realistic shot here. So I'm gonna say this game can blow out to 10 goals. Then we've got the Gold Coast Suns and Collingwood at, uh, at Metricon Stadium, Heritage Bank. Sorry, I keep calling it Metricon. Uh, this one is actually giving me some pause for thought. Gold Coast has just recently rolled Hawthorne. Um, you know, Hawthorne having an off day by their own reasonable standards lately and um, obviously missing James Sicily. But overall, you know, the, the Suns have put in a solid season. They're seven and seven uh, with a percentage of better than 100 right now. Collingwood is obviously a far better side, but something about this game just gives me a little bit of a feeling we might see a shock upset. I think Gold Coast are good enough to beat them at home if Collingwood are off. I can't really put into words why. I'm getting an upset feeling about this game. You know, different to the upset feeling I get when I watch West Coast games. Uh, I think there is a stinky chance of an upset here, but I'm not going to be brave enough to tip Collingwood because I can't articulate exactly why I think Gold Coast could win this game. They're a decent side. They're decent at home. Collingwood can't have an off day and win this game, but I'll say Collingwood by 15 points regardless because I'm a pussy. This one is an intriguing one between Essendon and Port Adelaide at the MCG. So the the ground here plays a factor here a little bit for me. Essendon, you know, had a good run of about four wins against some, you know, average opposition, but you know, they're a decent side this year and they were disappointing against Fremantle. I think they were well short of their, their own standard. I know Fremantle is a decent side on their day, but I think even Essendon fans would admit probably one of the worst losses this season in terms of the way they performed and they left a little bit out there. Port Adelaide are arguably the form side of the competition right now. They've won 11 on the trot, playing some really good football, looking every bit of series contender. Um, they're also coming off the bye as well, which is something to consider. And the MCG factor will be interesting here because I've been a little bit unconvinced by Port at the MCG, which is no, you know, real harsh criticism. That's just a common thing for interstate clubs. They did beat Richmond there recently, but I do think Essendon are a, tough, are a tougher opponent than Richmond. And I have a feeling that we, we're gonna see an upset here. And I like Port, I don't think I'm hating on Port, but I've just got a feeling that Essendon will be able to play them better at the G in this particular game. And I'm gonna tip them. They got within five points at Adelaide Oval earlier this year. 
I'm tipping an upset here. Port are due for a loss, you'd have to say. They're still gonna be, you know, around the mark for the flag, you know, deep in September. I do think that. They are probably, yeah, they're the second best team in the comp right now. But Essendon to shock them and give them a bit of a reality check and then Port will be better for it. 25 points. Then we got Hawthorne and Carlton, a bottom four clash, as you can see, 15th versus 16th. And uh, this one at the G, I think this could actually be a half decent game for some reason. I feel like we might actually be treated some quality football that will belie a bottom four clash. Or at least it'll be exciting. I think this game will be close for some reason. Um, honestly, you know, Hawthorne's form has been improved. And then we saw that uh, against Gold Coast, they got undone a little bit. And much has been said about James Sicily. Um, obviously, one player doesn't make a team, but he is also one of the best, in, most informed players in the competition right now. And, you know, their captain. So uh, a big loss for them. And I think for me, that swings my tip in this particular game. Gold Coast just smashed Hawthorne. Carlton just smashed Gold Coast. Uh, it's all a little bit weird. And I do think that if Sicily was playing, I would tip. Hawthorne, but I don't quite have that faith in them this particular week. Uh, I will tip Carlton to win this. I'd say they randomly play well and win by 12 points. Melbourne versus GWS uh, in Darwin, I believe. Uh, fourth versus 15th, but I feel like the gap has tightened a little bit between those two sides, only because Melbourne are in a little bit of a slump right now. And we've seen things start to click a little bit under Adam Kingsley and they're six and eight, which is not a shameful record, currently technically in the bottom four. Um, so I do think the Giants will probably make a bit of a game of this. Uh, that being said, there is still a gap between the two sides and I don't expect Melbourne to slump too much further. Melbourne's most recent loss was a tough game at GMHBA uh, where Geelong were just a little bit better for longer. Overall, not really too concerned with Melbourne's form. And uh, I think this, if they did lose this, would bring into serious doubt their ability to compete for the Premiership this year. As good as it, and as proved as GWS have been, I don't really give them a huge chance of winning this game, but I think they could at least be competitive. So I'll say it is Melbourne by 24 points. And then we've got West Coast versus St Kilda. Um, I don't know how much to really analyze about this game. The Eagles have lost their last five games by an average of 104 points. Elliot Yeo has been ruled out for this game. Um, Sam Petrovsky Seaton's also out. Three injuries from that game, just to make it better. But yeah, obviously one of the worst teams we've ever seen. And St Kilda, uh, we can talk about them a little bit. Obviously, a little bit of a mid-season slump and uh, gone down by five goals against Brisbane last week. Tough opponent, probably should have gotten closer uh, and at times threatened to get closer. But obviously, the Lions ran away with it a little bit at the end. Um, is there any real doubt about this game? I'm just going to go ahead and tip St Kilda. St Kilda are not a side to really put teams away. You know, they're more likely to choke when West Coast here and keep them to about 30 points, um, you know, like everyone else. But I'll say, you know, 60 points and that's, well, you know what, let's go, let's go 75. It lets me do 75. Well, there you have it guys. Those are my tips for round 16. As we look at the ladder, top four remains the same. No big shocks there. St Kilda regained a little bit of confidence with a big win over West Coast, stay in the top five. Essendon uh, shoot up or stay in the top six because I have them as an upset victory over Port Adelaide. In fact, that top eight's exactly the same. Uh, not much changing there. Carlton move up a little bit. GWS back into the bottom four purely because of who they play this week. So anyway, I uh, look forward to your tips in uh, the comment section below. Let me know maybe what's your upset of the round. I think it could be Gold Coast over Collingwood for no particular reason. Just got that feeling, but again, I'm really bad at tipping, so don't necessarily follow that tip. As always, guys, I appreciate your support on the channel. Uh, keep liking the videos if you're enjoying them. That would help very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.